Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Oh, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. In this place, blowing wind from heaven. from heaven to those who are viewing us by Facebook and YouTube. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our call to worship, beloved disciples, welcome as we gather. We are seeking, we, what are you seeking? I'm sorry. We seek God's presence all around us. Beloved disciples, if God's presence is all around us, what are you seeking? We seek to recognize God's presence. Dearly beloved, if God is among us, what are you seeking? We seek God in the face of family, friends, and neighbors. Beloved disciples, if God is in the face of your neighbor, what are you seeking? We seek God in the search and the work for peace and wholeness for all our aspirations. As we gather today, we may meet God in, in our seeking and in our finding. Amen. 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 Our hymn of praise can be found on page 368, 368, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and blood and righteousness. Let us sing with uplifting voices, 368.
Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our Almighty God. As we come this morning for prayer, we know that all of us stand in need of prayer. And that without prayer, then prayer is our communication with God. So as we go to the throne this morning, we ask that you remember uh, Brother Tyrone Graham Sr., who's in the hospital. Would you remember all of our sick and shut in? Remember those who are going back to school or have gone back to college, that you would pray for them and the ones that are getting ready to go back to school. Uh, we pray for a successful school year for those who are going back to school. We pray for our teachers. We pray for our administrators. We pray for all of those who are involved with our children's lives. Because we know that teaching and school is a hard job, but we ask that you continue to lift them up in your prayers. So as we go to the throne of grace, let us bow our head and close our eyes. The hymnists write a song that says, Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. God, here we are on the second Sunday in the month of August. We come, God, first of all, to tell you thank you. We thank you, God, because you've been good to us. You allow us, oh God, to wake up this morning to see this brand new day. A day, oh God, that we've never seen before. And God, while the birds were chirping and the sun was shining, we rose with a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength. And for that, God, we are grateful to you this morning. And God, not only that, you allow us to come to Bethel United Methodist Church safe without any hurt, harm, or danger. And while we're here, oh God, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit down upon us. Send your spirit in this place, O oh God, that we may feel your presence and we may not leave the same way we came. And God, somebody come this morning who doesn't feel well. Somebody come this morning burdened. Somebody come this morning, O oh God, expecting a blessing from you. And God, we know that you're not in the disappointment business. We know that you're in the encouraging business. We know that you're in the business of healing and solving all of our problems. And God, right now, we ask that you go to Florence, to MUSC, and touch Brother Tyrone Graham Sr. right now. Massage his body, oh God, and let him feel your presence. Let him feel that you are still God and you're God all by yourself. And regardless of what the doctor may say, that you are the great physician. And God, not only him, but go with those, who, Lord, who've lost loved ones this week and have them funeralized. Lord, reassure them that you walk with them and you're always by their side. God, we ask that you go with our children as they go back to school this morning. We ask, so oh God, that you touch the administrators, touch all those who are employed with our school system, those who have an influence in our children's lives on a daily basis, those who, who take them to school on the bus or the car ride, those, oh God, who feed them in the cafeteria, those who just speak to them in the morning give them the will and give them the mindset to do right by the children. Give them the understanding that the children are our future and give them all that they need to succeed in life. And God bless this church. And bless the man who stands before this congregation to preach the word this morning. 
dip him down in the storehouse so God he may come out with the word, a word that will give encouragement, a word that will let somebody who's going through something know that, that Jesus is all around us. And then, oh God, when we've done all that you require us to do, we ask you for a home in your kingdom where you have declared the wicked shall cease from trouble and our weary soul shall be at rest. It's in the wonderful name of your son, Jesus Christ, that every heart say amen. 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 Brother Maceo Scott will come with our Old Testament scripture and the Reverend Shirley McKnight will come with our New Testament scripture. Let's receive them by the words of amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Today I'll be reading Genesis, the 37th chapter, 1 through 4th verse and 12 through the 28th verse. And I'll be reading from the NIV version of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And it reads... Jacob lived in the land where his, where his father had stayed, and the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Jacob, a young man of 17, was tending the flock where his brothers, the sons of Bela and the son of Zippah, his father's wives, and and he brought their father a bad report, according to them. Now Israel lived, loved Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made an or a or an ordinance rule up for him. For when his brother saw that their father loved him more than any of, any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Now 12. <clears throat> now his brother had gone to gaze their father's flock near Shechem, and Israel said to Joseph, as you know, your brother are gaze, gazing the flock near Shechem. Come, I, will, I, I am going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to them, go and see if all is well with your brother and, and with, him, with them, with them the flock and bring word back to them, back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron, where Joseph arrived at Shechem. Fifteen, a man found with want with found him wandering around in a field and asked him, What are you looking for? He replied, I am looking for my brother. Can you tell me where they are gazing their flocks? They have moved on from here. The man answered, I heard them saying, let's go to daughter. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near daughter. But they saw him in the distance, and, and before he reached them, 
they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer. They say to each other, come now, let's kill him. And throw him into these certain and, and saying that all vigorous animals devour him. They were, they, <clears throat> then well, then we'll see that come to his dream, this dreamer. 21, when Reuben heard this, he tried to re rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he, sa he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into the person <clears throat> where the what what with the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said to say, Reuben said this is this to the rescuers from him to them and take them back to his father. Twenty-three. <clears throat> so when Joseph came to his brother, they stripped him of his robe. Of orders, they they robe he was wearing, and they look they took him and threw him into the sersen. The sersen was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan. Of Israelites coming from the, from Galilee, their their camels were were loaded with spice, balm, and myrrh, and they were all that they and they were on their way to the they were on their way to myrrh, were on their way to take them down to Egypt. 26, Judah said to the brother, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us, let us sell him to the Israelites and not, and not lay his hand on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His blood, his blood, his brothers agreed. And 28, so when the Mennonites merchants came by, brothers pulled Joseph up out of the surgeon and sold him for 20 shekels of silver. And the Israelites, and the Israelites said, and the Israelites who took him to Egypt. Thus I have read Genesis, the 37th chapter, 1 through 4, 12 through the 28th verse. May the Lord add a reading to the hearing of these words. Amen. I will be reading the New Testament. I ask uh, if you will stand, those who are able. The New King James Version of the Bible, Matthew 14 chapter, starting with the 22nd verse, and I'll be reading through the 33rd verse. And it reads, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch, of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. 
And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, it is you. Command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the water, the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he, crawl, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they go, got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. 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 Let us remain standing as we uh, affirm our faith, which can be found on page 881. 881, United Methodist Hymnals, the Apostles' Creed. When you've gotten there, please say amen. Amen. Let us begin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be to the Next, we have a selection from the choir, and then I'll come back with the morning message. Let's receive the choir by the words of Amen. amen. Oh, Ezekiel said he saw him amen. as a wheel in the middle of the wheel. John talked about him in the book of the seven seals. Some call him the Rose of Sharon, others call him the Prince of Peace. But Call Jesus my rock. Oh, Ezekiel said he saw him as a wheel in the middle of the wheel. John, John talked about him in the book of the seven seas. Some call him the Rose of Sharon, others call him the Prince of Peace. But I call Jesus my rock. I call him Jesus, I call him Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, I call him Jesus, sweet Jesus, well I know he won't be. He's always walking beside me, you know, I call Jesus. I call him Jesus. His name is Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Well, I know he won't deny me. He's always 
walking beside me. You know, I call Jesus my rock. I call him Jesus. My rock. Oh, Jesus. My rock. His name is Jesus. Lily of the valley, Jesus. He, he is the stone that the book we rejected. But the Lord has made him, made him head of the corner. He's a rock of ages. He's cleft for me. Do let me hide myself in thee. Oh, let the water and the blood come down on me. Come down on me. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. I know him, Jesus. Oh, in Christ. Solid rock that stand. Oh, Jesus. Well, I know he won't. He's always walking beside me. You know, I call Jesus my rock. I call him Jesus. My mother called him. My sister call him, my brother call him, he's a lawyer in the courtroom, he's a doctor in the sick, he is a bridge over troubled waters, oh Jesus, yeah Jesus. Tell me what do you call him? He's Alpha and Omega. I call him Jesus. He's water when you're thirsty. He's bread when you're hungry. He is the shelter. He's all in all. Hey, Jesus. I call him Jesus, Lily of the Valley, Jesus. My rock. I call him Jesus. Tell me what do you call him? Tell me what do you call him? I call him Jesus. Oh, Jesus, my rock. Well, I know he won't be nigh me. He's always walking beside me. You know, I call Jesus my rock. Oh. Amen. Jesus is my rock. My rock in a weary land. Shelter in the time of need. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. If you have your Bibles, turn to the scripture that was read for our New Testament reading, Matthew, the 14th chapter. And I'm just going to read verse 27. I'm just going to focus on verse 27. It's Matthew, the 14th chapter, verse 27. And if you got now, please say amen. amen. Verse 27, I'll be reading from the New Standard, the New American Standard Bible. Verse 27 says, But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. I want to use for a brief subject this morning. It is I. Take courage. Don't be afraid. Let us pray. 
God, as we stand behind this sacred desk this morning, somebody need to understand that you're still God, regardless of what's going on in their lives. You're still God, regardless of what goes on in the world. You said that I am that I am, that you are the great God. And God, we thank you right now for showing us who you really are. We thank you for keeping us. Thank you for making us. Thank you for making a way out of no way for us. And we ask, oh God, that you continue to do what you do best. Continue to keep us in your arms of protection. As I stand here this morning, oh God, I ask that you dip me down in this storehouse. And I come up with a word that will give somebody some satisfaction. Give somebody some reassurance this morning that it's going to be all right. That no matter what you're facing... He's right there with you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In several stories in the gospel, Jesus, when he meets people whose lives have been turned upside down, he tells them to take courage, take heart, or be of good cheer, or be encouraged, or go in peace. He tells us this because he is the great encourager. He is the one that can say, peace, be still. He is the one that can cheer us up when we're down. He is the one that can lift us when our spirits seems to be all everywhere but where it needs to be. When our life is turned upside down, he's there to say, I'm with you no matter what you go through. I'm there when nobody else is there. I'm there when your brothers and sisters leave you. I'm there when the doctor leaves you. I'm there when everybody turned their back on you. I am there with you. Oh, do I have any witnesses in here this morning that, that when life seemed to have you all turned around, Jesus was right there with you. When life seems to have you going in a different direction and you don't know which direction you was going, Jesus was there to bring you back on track. Oh, I'm grateful this morning because I know who he is. And I know what he can do because he's done it over and over again. Yes, he tells us to take courage. Take courage and don't be afraid. See, courage is not just a giant leap of faith. It can be a multitude of small steps Amen. that we have to take that adds up to obedience going in the same direction. Yes. Courage can mean doing less. And, 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 and Jesus, in asking his disciples to take courage, it's like asking them to trust him so they can persevere. And with that, knowing that, with knowing that, you and I can take courage and be encouraged because we know that Jesus mm -hmm. is everywhere when where we are. Yeah. Yeah. He's with us when we're here. He's with us when we go through mm -hmm. challenges and situations. He is right there with us. Yeah. He scripture said, it is I. Yeah. It is I. As we look at the story in the text this morning, Jesus told his disciples to take the boat to the other side while he went into the mountains to pray. Yeah. Isn't it good to know that Jesus prays? Even in all of the New Testament scripture, the new gospels, we see where Jesus went somewhere by himself to pray. And how many of us go to our secret closets where there's nobody else but us and we can pray to the God that will do all things but fail? Yeah. Yeah. While they were making their way to the other side, a storm came. Mm -hmm. The winds and the waves were high, mm -hmm. making the trip difficult yeah. to journey. And I'm reminded of an old spiritual that says, there's a storm out yeah. on the ocean. Yeah. And it's moving right. this old way. Right. Yeah. If your soul is not anchored yeah. in Jesus, you'll surely drift away. Yeah. 
I'm glad this morning that I'm anchored in Jesus so that when the storm comes, I can hold on to God's unchanging hand. I can hold on to the one that says, peace, be still. See, the storm came and, and it had the disciples, they had to refocus their attention because they were focusing on the problem of the wind and the waves. And Jesus just gave them a clear command to go to the other side. The disciples were paralyzed by the strength of the storm and they didn't realize that Jesus was more powerful than the storm. The storm is not meant to destroy you. It is meant to reveal the power of God who's in control of every storm that comes. He's in control of Hugo. He's in control of all the storms. The flood, the rain, when the thunder comes, God is in control of all the storms. See, fear paralyzed the disciples. But Jesus' message to them was to take courage. Don't be afraid. It's me. Me, Jesus. The one who's always with you. Me, Jesus, your Savior, your Redeemer. The one who's able to save. It's me, the one that comes with a purpose. It's me, Jesus, the one who died on Calvary's cross. It's me who went to the grave. It's me who got up on the third day. It's me who has all healing power in the palm of my hands. Jesus reassured them that they didn't have to worry, they didn't have to fear because he was there with them. And then Peter spoke up and said, Jesus, if it's really you, tell me to come. So Jesus said, come, come. That reassuring word for us to step out on faith knowing that Jesus is there with us. But well, sometimes our problem is when Jesus tells us to come, we still stay in the boat. Yeah. See, when Jesus tells us to come, he's already made a way for us to come. Yeah. But we have to have the courage, we have to have the faith to know that if he tells us what he tells us, he's going to back it up. Yeah. He's not going to leave us out on a limb. If he said, come, you come. Yes, fear will cause you to become comfortable where you are. Mm -hmm. And we've got a lot of comfortable Christians mm -hmm. in the church. Yeah. We don't want to go outside of our comfort zone. We, the, the, the old phrase said, we've always done it this way. Yeah. That's just a comfort phrase. Yeah. But if you really want to change, mm -hmm. you'll say, whatever the Lord's will is, I'll do. Amen. Because if it's the Lord's will, it'll work out for us. Amen. It'll work out because it's his will. Amen. But we're just so comfortable just coming. We get complacent. We come to church. We go home. We, we come for an hour, hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half to praise the Lord and we, that's all the time we give him. And then sometimes some of you come to Bible study and then that's all the time we give him. And then if we do everything else, we get comfortable in our life. But when things happen, then we go running. I'm surprised Jesus don't say sometimes, well, you didn't know me but a few hours. Right. Why are you coming to me now? Right. But he's not like us. That's something we'll say. Yeah. But Jesus is always there. Yes. Whether we're comfortable or uncomfortable, whether we move when he say move, he's there with us. Yeah. But we have to have faith to believe that whatever he says, mm -hmm. he's going to do. Yes. Well, let me give you an example of something that everybody probably can relate to. How many can ride a bicycle? 
How many when you started riding a bicycle, you had to have training wheels? And you had the training wheels on the bicycle so you can really balance yourself and you wouldn't fall to the left or you wouldn't fall to the right. You kind of stayed up in a straight and narrow. And, 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 and the more you rode the bicycle, the more you got comfortable. You got so comfortable to the point where if they, when they took the training wheels off, you was able to balance yourself. See, that balance that, that, that you were so secure with is your, was your faith. Yes. You had the faith to understand that when the training wheels come off, I can trust God so that if I ride the bicycle, I won't fall to the left or to the right. I'll stay up on the bicycle and I'll ride it like it's supposed to. But some of us and some Christians, we still have that training wheel mentality. We don't want to let go. We don't want to let go of our training wheels. We still want to want, want, want to have a security blanket. You got a security blanket in Jesus, but sometimes you have to step out on faith so that you can realize. That there is a God. Amen. You stepping out on faith ain't for God. It's for you. It's building character in you. It's building reassurance in you knowing that what God said, he'll back it up. But here Peter, here Peter, Jesus told him, come. come. Peter started walking on water and when the wind blew, it distracted Peter. And it does the same thing for us in our lives. When the wind blows, fear comes in. When the wind blows, doubt comes in. When the wind blows, that's when we have little faith. Because we get off course. We get distracted. We take our eyes off what God has in store for us. And we focus on the storm. We focus on the distraction instead of focusing on Jesus. Yes. That's exactly what Peter did. And Peter cried out, Lord, save me. Yes. And we all cry that sometime. Amen. Lord, save us. Yes. Lord, I've got into something that I don't know how I got into, but... Lord, rescue me. Save me. Reach down and pick me up. Lord, I need you to come into my life. Lord, I'm here I'm all by myself. Lord, just come. And what does the Lord do? He shows up. He puts us back in the right track. He puts us back on the right course. He puts us in the right perspective. He increases our faith so that we can understand that the faith is really not about him. It's for us. Because what does Hebrew say faith is? Faith is the hope of the substance of something to believe in and the evidence of it. So faith is you are hoping that God will do what he said he's going to do. And then he provides you with evidence by showing you that he did what he said he's going to do. Amen. That's what faith is. That's what faith is. But we are lacking in faith. And that's why he tells us to take heart, take courage. He's really telling us to man up, a woman up. Because I am God. The one who came to save you. I am he. It is me, he said. It is me. And not Lewis Ashley. He is Jesus. Christ. Because he came walking on water. How many of you can walk on water? 
He came and they said it was a ghost. How many of you said it's a ghost? How many times have Jesus came to you and you didn't recognize who he was? Jesus comes to us all the time. He comes sometimes in a human form. He comes in somebody who we really don't know. And we, that's why they said, you have to be careful how you entertain strangers. Because God could be coming in the way of that stranger, and the way you treat that stranger is the same way you treat God. So you have to be careful how you treat your brothers and sisters because you never know. You never know. And I'm going to my seat in a minute. Faith is not just saying yes to the United Methodist doctrine or to the doctrine of the church, but yes to God who created us. The God who saved us. The God who draws us to new life. The storm of life will focus on the faith if you allow it. Yes. If you allow it. Yes. Jesus tested Peter's faith and he had everything he needed uh -huh. to be successful in his faith. Yes. And we have everything we need to pass the test of faith. But we can testify to God's provisions in our lives. Somebody can testify that when I was sick, he healed me. Somebody can testify that when I didn't have money in my pocket, he made a way out of no way. Somebody can testify when I didn't have a dime, oh, he put it in my pocket. Somebody can testify when my children were acting crazy, oh, you came and straightened their lives out. Somebody can testify I once was lost, but now I'm fine. Blind, but now I see. Somebody can testify I'm not what I used to be, but thank God that you brought me from a mighty long way. And God is still bringing us right now. He's bringing us every, every day. And like Peter, we should trust Jesus. He had the experience because he was one of the disciples that followed Jesus around and saw all what Jesus did. He experienced the miracles firsthand. He experienced the testimonies that he heard from other folks. He experienced the lady touching the hem of Jesus' garment. He experienced the man, Lord, the friends lowering the man down in front of Jesus and Jesus telling him to pick up his mat and walk. He experienced Jesus turning water into wine. He experienced Jesus healing Jairus' daughter. He experienced everything that Jesus done. He had the experience, but he still had little faith. Yes. My question is, uh -huh. how can a man that walked with Jesus still have little faith? Amen. Uh -huh. After all, You've seen him done. Uh -huh. His faith still was small. Uh -huh. He still doubted Jesus. Yeah. Just imagine if it was you or I who seen what Jesus done uh -huh. and we still doubt. He was even there in the room when Jesus came through the door. He was there even to see the hand print, the nail prints in Jesus' hands, but he still had little faith. But what is your what is your faith about today? After you experience Jesus, is your faith still little? Or you have big faith? Are you still doubtful of the power of God? Or do you really know the power of God? Are you doubting that God can do anything in your life? Are you doubting that 
He can heal the sick. Are you doubting that he can raise the dead? Are you doubting that he can make a way out of no way? Are you doubting him this morning? Don't doubt. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be of good cheer. Take heart. Because he said, it is I, in some versions. In some versions, he said, it's me. Do you remember me? The one who they crucified. Do you remember me? The one they put in an old bar or tomb. Do you remember me? The one that stayed there for three days, but early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Do you remember me? I'm the one that when you had problems and you were walking down the road and you saw two sets of prints and all of a sudden you saw one set, it was me who picked you up and carried you through your problems. It was me who was there with you when everybody else gave up on you. It was me when your friends turned and went away. It was me when everybody gave up on you and I was there to say, Dill, you can do it. You can do it. You still have power. It was me that said you can get through chemo. It was me who said you can get through sickness. It was me who was there with you when the doctor gave you up. It was me who was there with you when you lost your loved one and you thought you was going to lose your mind. It was me who was there to say, I, I got you in my arms. I wrapped my loving arms of protection all around you. And it's still him. He's still here waiting and asking for you. Are you willing to accept him as your savior? Are you willing to give him your all in all? Are you willing to let somebody else know that I have a savior that has all power? Not only does he have all power, but he can work anything out because he's worked it out before and he's working it out now. It's me who when you was having hell on your job that told you to hold fast and I'll make your enemies your footstool. It was me who prepared the table in the presence of your enemies and your enemies couldn't do anything about it. It was me. Jesus is saying, it's I. Don't be afraid of what you're going through in the world. Don't be afraid of, 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 of the election. Don't be afraid of these politicians. Don't be afraid of your church members. Don't be afraid of, of the people in the world because I am that I am. I am greater than anybody here on earth. I have power very greater than anybody here on earth. I am God and God all by himself. So even in your problems, even in your storms, even when you start back school, even when you start back to work, remember that you are greater than your problems. Because you serve a great God. You serve an awesome God. You serve a God that lives down on the inside of you. So the only thing you have to do is say, get thee behind me, Satan. Because the God I serve is stronger, is bigger, is better than any one of my problems. So be encouraged this morning. Don't be afraid. Because God said his son Jesus is with you and is by your side. And will always be there for you. Yes. He has never left us. Yes. He has never forsaken us. And he will not leave you now. Yes. 
I'm a witness. And you're a witness too if you really tell the truth. You're a witness because he's done it for you over and over and over again. He's made waves in your life. He's worked things out for you. He's been there for you when nobody else was there. And he said, it is I. It's me. The one that you can count on. It's me when the church folk turn their back on you. It's me when my friends discount me. It's me when I had a drug and alcohol problem. It's me when I'm going through divorce. It's me when I'm sick. It's me who've been there for you. And I'm here for you now. So remember, you can walk through your tough times. Jesus is praying for you. He's interceding for you. He's caring for you. He's talking to his father about you right now. He knows all your needs because he is here with us. He sees all and he knows all. He walks where we walk. He feels where we feel. And he's seen where we've seen. And he's heard what we've heard. But he goes on to his father. The scripture said before he went and walked on the water, he went into the mountain to pray. And he prayed for us. That's why the song said, somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. He's praying for you. And he's praying for me. So children of the high, most high, don't ever think that you are in a thing all by yourself. Because you're not. He's always with us. He comes to us. But do we have the faith to realize who he really is? And when he comes, he don't ask for anything. He just said, come. Come. He could have told Peter, come and bring your money. Come and bring your furniture. Come and bring everything. But he just said, come. Just as you are. He don't need our material stuff. We can't take us with us anyhow. I ain't never seen a, a, a U-Haul behind a hearse. The scripture said, naked you come, and naked you shall return. All this other stuff is extra. He just wants you to come. So we remember, whatever you're going through, God is able. Amen. Amen. One more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. I'm going home to live with Jesus. One more time. Oh, one more time. Oh, one more time. Lord, I'm glad to be in that number one more time. Oh, one more time. Amazing grace, how sweet the song. I once was Lord, but now I'm found. Lord, I'm glad to be in that number. One more time, oh, one more time, oh, one more time, oh, one more time, one more time. Lord, I'm glad to be in that number. One more time, oh, one more time. Went to the valley, started to pray. My soul got happy and I stayed all day. Lord, I'm 
Glad to be in that number one more time. Oh, one more time. Oh, one more time. Lord, I'm glad to be in that number. Lord, I'm glad to be in that number. Lord, I'm glad to be in that number. One more time. Oh, one more time. Some of y'all really don't know that really don't mean it so we need to sing that some more so you can really know what you mean say one more time one more time one more more time one more time but I'm glad to be in that number one more time oh one more time one more Lord, I'm glad to be in that number. Lord, I'm glad to be in that number. One more time, oh, one more time. Went to the valley, started to pray. My soul got happy and I stayed all day. Lord, I'm glad to be in that number one more time. Oh, one more time. Oh, one more time. Oh, one more. more. Come on, church. One more time. Lord, I'm glad to be in that number. Lord, I'm. Come on, y'all. Lord, I'm glad to be in that number one more time. Oh, one more time. And I, I really think so. Still don't get it. So, one more time, the Lord is allowed. We are. That's one more time. And then it says, the song says that maybe I won't be here long. That I'm going home to see Jesus. But one more time I can praise his name. One more time I can lift my hands and say hallelujah. One more time I can say thank you Jesus. One more time I can give him glory. I got to give him glory while I got time because time I may not have in a few minutes. Time I may not have later on. But while the blood is running warm in your veins and you got breath in your body, you ought to give God some praise. You ought to give God some glory because you don't know when the next time may be. You don't know when the next time may be. Yeah, we hit. Right yeah. Could leave church, and that could be the last. about what you don't have. 
because he hath known. So we ask those who's able to stand, stand as we open the door of the church. Today the Lord is speaking to you. And he's asking you this morning, are you tired of living the way that you live? Are you tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired? He said, come. I'll give you what you need. Come. I'll give you new life. Come. And I'll make you. So where there'll be one this morning? Where there'll be one? The altar is open for prayer. We could do something today with our altar call. Our school. And we want all the parents of our school aid children to come along with them. And then we want the grand to come. We want you to stand behind your child, your children. known out this morning who's going to school to cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ. Reverend McKnight, now nah, she's going to take this side of the room and I'll take this side of the room and after we are known them, we go pray for the students, we go pray for the parents, the grandparents, we go pray for everyone. We want the children to come and kneel like the red, like the altar. Come and kneel like the altar. You parents can come stand behind them. I want you to place your hand on them. As our musician plays softly, God, we come right now, anointing our children of this church, anointing them, O oh God, and pleading the blood over them right now. Cover them, O oh God, 
as they go to school this week. Not only in school, but cover them in their lives. Help them understand, oh God, that you're God and you're God all by yourself. And that you know who they are and let them know who you are. Let them know, oh God, that when they get down and out, that they can call on your name. Let them know, God, that when things are not right in their lives, they can call on you. And not only then they can call on you, but they can pick up your word and read for themselves, oh God, that you are a great God. That you are a God that sit high and look low and know all about them. Let them know, God, that you made them. You know every hair on their head. You know everything about them. And God, we ask that you keep them in your will. Not their will, but your will. Let your will be done in their lives. That when they get up, go out into the world, oh God, that they'll represent you. And people will see Christ in them. And God, we thank you for their parents. And God, we ask that you do the same for the parents. Touch them one by one and name by name. And go from heart to heart and mind to mind. Move from household to household, oh God. Let us all understand, oh God, that you're God and you're God all by yourself. We need you in this world right now, God. God, we're facing so many things in this world. So many challenges, so many ups and downs. But we know, God, that you hold the world in your hand. We know that you are God and beside there's no other. And we worship you, we praise you. And we give you all the honor. And God, no matter what the problems is of the parents, no matter what they face, let us still show love. Let us show understanding. But God, be in all of our lives. And God, all of these parents and who works for the school system, bless them, oh God, because not only do they have their children to watch over, but they have all the rest of the children to watch over. Be a fence all around them. Give them the understanding, God, that, that you love them and that they love the children as well. Because we know, God, some kids don't even get love at home. And the only place they find love is when they come to school. But God, we thank you right now for grace and mercy. Thank you for putting strong people in the school that will love kids who are not theirs. Thank you for putting strong people in the school, oh God, that take time with our future. Thank you, God, for being there for us. Bless our teachers, our administrators, our counselors. Just bless the entire Williamsburg County school system. That this year, we have a successful school year. We won't have any craziness going on. We won't have any violence going on. We just have a successful school year. And that we can give you glory. We can give you honor and we can give you praise. It's all about you and not about us. And God, we pray right now for those who are going through bereavement. We pray, oh Lord, right now who's going through illness. We pray for this community that you would touch it right now, that you would heal among the land. We pray, oh God, for those who are on our sick and shut-in list. We pray for those, oh God, Sister Verley and all of those who are traveling back and forth to New York. We ask that you touch them, you cover them. We pray for those who are covered, who are going up and down the highways. Lord, we love you, we adore you, and we give you glory. And God, if you don't do anything else for us, you've done enough. And we glorify your name right now. In the name of Jesus, touch right now. In the name of Jesus, bless right now. In the name of Jesus, we give it all to you. This is our prayer for our children and our school system and our community and our church. We give it to you, God. Amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen.
morning. Good morning. Good, once again, good morning. Good morning. Do we have an individual who like to stand, say your name, you may do so at this time? We'd like to welcome all visitors here at Bethany United Methodist Church and family extends a very warm welcome to everyone who's visited with us today. Whether you are a visitor or searching for a place of worship, we are delighted to have you here. And when you leave this building, we hope that we have cultivated a positive relationship and encourage your spirit in the Lord. Once again, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. The thought for the week, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. <laughs> Let us remember to pray for our sick and shedding members, uh, community, church, and each other. And the names are Sister Paula Leggett, Sister Crystal House, Sister Burley Epps, Mr. Esau Rouse Jr., Mr. Gus Scott, Sister Jeannie Brown Burroughs, Sister Luetta Jean, Sister Bobette McFadden. Friendly reminders, Bethany Not Better Friends and Family Day program will be held on September 24th, 2023 at 3 o'clock p.m. Women of Faith meeting every third Sunday after service. United Methodist Men meeting every second Saturday at 9 o'clock a.m. This comes from the the New Light United Methodist Church in Nisus, Orangeburg, South Carolina. You are cordially invited to attend our upcoming summer revival services on August 14th through the 16th, 2023 at New Light United Methodist Church. Our revival service will begin at 7 o'clock p.m. We have a dynamic revivalist, Reverend Jeffrey Saley, uh, Sally of the Walter Borough District. He is the pastor of Sand Hill United Methodist Church and Cannon United Methodist Church of Ridgeville, South Carolina. Once again, this revival will be held on August 14th through the 16th at New Light United Methodist Church at 7 o'clock p.m., which is in Nisus, Orangeburg, South Carolina. This comes from St. Paul United Methodist Church. Dear United, greetings from St. Paul King Street Sisterhood of Grace. We are extending an invitation to attend our annual United Women in Faith program. This program, uh, this year, our annual program is scheduled for Sunday, August 20th. You are welcome to attend Sunday school, which begins at 8.45 and followed by our worship experience at 10 o'clock. United Women of Faith members are asked to wear white because it is an inherently positive color associated with puberty, innocence, and goodness. Um, this comes from St. Paul United Methodist Church on um, King Street, South Carolina. This will be held in the, on the uh, information board, but what it is, is it's the McGill and Associated Corporate presents a historical marker, unveiling, and dedication ceremony, which will be held Saturday, October 7, 2023, at 10 o'clock a.m. at Epps McGill Farmhouse on Eastern Avenue, King Street. Once again, this is the historical marker unveiling and dedication of the Epps McGill Farmhouse. And once again, it will be placed uh, on the uh, information board. Hello, my name is Gloria Davis McClary. I am the wife of uh, the reading? Materia. Materia uh, McClary. Please order a donut certificate from me. The funds will be used to cover my medical bills at Duke University. I am a member of St. Paul United Methodist Church. Please give your donation to Lisa McCullough. Thanks 
for your continuous prayers and support. And she has the uh, donut <coughs> signing sheet up front. This is the ninth annual Trio Festival 2023 Family Fun Foods and Drink uh, Music. Um, this will be held in Trio. It called Barbecue, Rib, and Perlo Competition Car Show on Seaboard Road, or Seaboard Square area. This will be held on August 25th which is Friday, which will have the fried fish. Friday night starts at 6 o'clock. Saturday, August 26th, will start at 9 o'clock a.m. Car parade lineup, Trial Park, 1.30 p.m. Once again, this is the ninth annual Trial Community Festival of 2023. This comes from Paul E. McKnight, candidate for Williamsburg County, um, District 5. My name is Paul. I am a 42-year-old resident of Winsburg County and product of the rural, ace, uh, rural acre community. And what I, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he do have his card up, up front, and I can kind of sum it up on the back. It has vote for Paul E. Knight, County Councilman, District Number 5, Lifetime Winsburg County Residents, Graduate of King Street High School, um, BS, Agriculture and Economics, South Carolina United, um, South Carolina State University, co-owner, operator of El Lojo Lounge and Carter, um, Catering, co-owner of Little Wizards Learning Center, member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, member of Square Deal Large 448, and Beth United Methodist Church um, trustee. Once again, he's running for District 5. Let's please support him. The election date will be held on October 10th, 2023. Um, he has cards up here and a poster which will probably be placed as long as well as the uh, the uh, Epps and McGill farmhouse. Once again, school starts on August 16th, which is uh, Wednesday. As the Rev mentioned, we hope that we have a successful year. Um, we would like the support of the family, um, the community, because um, uh, we all got to work together to get these kids through school. Lord, thank you. Uh, I said, Lord, mm. thank you. Rev, thank you for uh, <laughs> annoying the kids. <laughs> I want to say, Lord, you know we're going to need it. <laughs> that I have with me at this time, and here are the announcements come from the pastor members from the church. Thank you.
Sister Israel is the chairperson for our friends and family, but she and I work hand in hand in getting this uh, accomplished. Uh, so uh, let's not forget on the 24th of September, which is the fourth Sunday in September, and we I know y'all say, well, why are you announcing this now? Well, we are looking for everyone, we are asking if you can, as the Lord will, please pay for $250. It's which what we are soliciting for, the $250 on that Sunday. So we're trying to do it in advance, get everyone enough time so they can plan accordingly for the occasion. Um, our guest speaker is going to be our pastor's cousin from Trinity, no, I'm sorry, not Trinity, New Ebenezer Church in Florence, South Carolina, Reverend Gamble, Norman Gamble's church. Her name is uh, Reverend Carter. Mm -hmm. So please uh, make sure we come out and let's support for that occasion and let's get all geared up and let's do what we got to do to make this event successful. Remember, we only do two fundraising events in 365 years of one year. 365 days in one year. So, and that is our fact and our friends and family. So please, let's make sure we put our best foot forward so we can really make this a huge success. Okay? And I thank you for your time. Amen. 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 Um, before I forget, <clears throat> I want to meet with these two individuals immediately after church, uh, Brother Harrison McKnight III and uh, Emmett Moyd. Please see me before you leave church this afternoon, this, this morning, please. Harrison McKnight III and Emmett Moyd. Um, our charge conference is coming up and the uh, nomination committee is preparing for um, the nomination form, the nomination leadership form, and we have some forms I think that Ms. Rivers gave out last week that nobody, that some people turned back in, but some people didn't. We need those forms back today. We need those forms back today so we can go ahead and get our charge conference stuff taken care of. Our charge conference is September the 17th at 1130, following morning service <coughs> on that Sunday morning. So we don't have a lot of time to uh, play around with, so we're trying to help me get this thing done and get it out of the way because we're having a revival in October. So we have a lot on our plate, so we're trying to get things taken care of. Uh, I would like to have everybody's uh, information to Ms. Rivers or myself by the fourth Sunday 
in this month, which you have only have two Sundays left, by the fourth Sunday in this month, we need all the papers from the trustees, the finance committee, the budget. We need everything by the 24th of this month, which is the fourth Sunday. Uh, so we can put it together and have a um, board meeting to approve what we need to approve before we go to charge conference. So please, ma'am, please, sir, get your information in. Now, we don't need um, individual reports from individual ministries. We don't need a report from the United Methodist Women. We don't need a report from the United Methodist Women, uh, women or the extra ministries, the youth or the children. We don't need a report from them because all that report will be compiled into the administrative uh, chairperson report. So before we had each committee had to do a report, you don't have to do that now. <coughs> so that, that relieves some pressure off of some people. Amen? Amen. So let's, please, ma'am, please, sir, try to have those things in so we can get this thing taken care of. I do have one additional announcement that came from Jerusalem United Methodist Church. Uh, they are having Friends and Family Day on next Sunday at 3 o'clock. They're having Friends and Family Day next Sunday at 3 o'clock. And uh, Brother Leon Thomas sent the information, said that if you come, he wants you to come wearing red so you can represent his group. Amen? Amen. Bible study homework that I think the ushers gave out already. It's from Romans, the second chapter, verses 1 through 11. Romans, the second chapter, verses 1 through 11. So if you would, get a Bible study homework. And um, if you would, show up for us on, on Wednesday night for Bible study. Um, if all hearts and minds are clear, uh, we still we could pray for Brother Irv, Brother Paul Irvin McKnight that God will uh, let him be successful in his bid for county council. We pray for all of our college age kids who've already gone back to college and the ones who are leaving. We ask that you continue to keep them in your prayers as well, uh, because all of us we're just one community. We're one village. But we have a lot of children in our village, and we need to pray for them and make sure that they get uh, what they deserve and what they need as they uh, go through college or go through high school. Amen? Amen. Amen. We ask the acolyte to come and extinguish the candle. We ask those who are able to stand to stand as our choir sing our closing song, and we'll do the benediction from the rear.